Every kid all over the world gets it down and gets taught the same basic things when their brains are soft and mushy. They, 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 we start ingraining them with the same rules no matter where you go. What do we tell kids from the time they're very small, very young? We tell them, hey, play nice. Smile and be polite. Be prompt. Look your best. Do your best. Tell the truth. Obey the rules. And say please and thank you. You know what this is? The fundamentals of work ethic. It really is. Those are the, things, the same things that we want our employees to do when they come into the workplace, right? We don't say play nice, smile, and be polite. We say have a positive attitude. We don't say be prompt. We say we need you to be reliable. We don't say look your best. We say look like a professional, right? We don't say do your best. We say show some initiative. When it's slow in here, don't just stand around. Do something. Make the place better than it was. We don't tell them tell the truth. We say have integrity. We don't say obey the rules. We say have respect for our culture. We don't say, say please and thank you. We say, show gratitude. Great customer service. So we teach these things to our kids when they're little infants. And through their primary years, see up until about the age of eight, a child performs for their parents, but after eight, they start performing for their peers. And cognitive dissidence says they look out in the world and they, we say, these are the things that are going to make you successful in the job, but then all of a sudden they realize they push those things aside. You see? And then they turn around and they start questioning all those rules. Sometimes they just erase them. Sometimes they cross them out. And every single one of them, sooner or later, they begin to question. They say, I know some people who are getting their money for nothing and their chicks for free, and you know what? They're not playing nice and they're not looking their best, they're not even doing their best. So why in the world do I need to do this? And as a result, the work ethic tends to erode. It's nothing new. Over the course of time, that's just what teenagers are all about. The parents get in the kid's grill, they try to teach them that, you know, the, those common sense rules, and all of a sudden the kid says, you know, I think I know better than you do, and they drive us absolutely crazy. Tell me, aren't there days you just want to float your little hands around their neck and shake them like an etch-a-sketch? <laughs> because they're not doing exactly what you want them to do. So it leaves a problem. This is what happens at home. It happens at school. They come into the workplace, and then what? Well, we, the employers, we have certain expectations on the day that they're hired. We assume that they already know work ethic. We, we, we assume that they already have this installed, and work ethic could be defined between that which they know and which they don't know. They've learned these rules, so naturally they know these rules apply in the workplace. My dad taught me how to work. Your dad taught you. You teaching your kids? <gasps> what does the employer what can they expect when it comes to rules and expectations about what kids know and don't know? You know what this is? This is the cognizance. This is how much they're cognizant of. But that's only one dimension. It's just we don't want people to come in and just know stuff. They've got to go beyond that. It's not just what they know. It's what they will do or not do. That's the compliance. And see, I think in this process between what they know and they don't know, or the cognizance, and what they do and they don't do, which is their compliance, that's the intersection. That's that thing that we call work ethic. Here's the problem. What if you don't know and you don't do? What if you have an individual in your workplace that doesn't know what to do and they don't do anything? That individual is idle. What do you do when people don't know what to do, but they do something anyway? And maybe get it right. That individual is lucky. That's really cool. They're just moving around and sooner or later they, you know, a blind pig, every blind pig eventually gets an acorn. Man, they're lucky. The problem with this is it isn't sustainable. What happens when somebody knows what to do, but they don't do it? Then they're cheating. Now, would you know what to do and you don't do it? You are cheating. None of us in here cheat. We don't cheat. That's why when we see that speed limit sign at 55, we would never dream of going 56. These aren't labels for people. These are states that people move in and out of. You have people in your restaurant that are lucky, that are idle, that are cheating, and you know where you want them? You want them to know what to do, and you want them to do it, because that's work ethic. And when they do that, they have value to you, therefore they're valued. And isn't that what you're doing? You're trying to move people over to the right and up. It's part teacher, part motivator, and it's all mentor. Because when you do that, you reach down and you grab those people and you pull them up into the quadrant, and that's how you adjust the meter is you're consistently trying to build the value of people. You're looking and saying, how can I influence this person so that they know more and they do more? 